Hi, I'm Bruce Jennings. This is Eko Shorikai. The Kai was developed for the preservation of the teachings of the late James Mitosi. What we're going to do in this particular tape, we're going to work some more with, with our hands. I'm going to do something that I haven't really done in a while, and that is try to slow things down. And I'm going to try to speak in, in uh, more of a common language called English, so that you might understand this a little bit better. Uh, many of you that see some of the things that we work with, However, towards the end of the tape, I will get into more explanation on concept and theory. But the main thing that you're going to watch, we're going to, we're going to work on the intricate part that the feet and the hands play together um, on doing your hand combinations. Okay, now watch. Many of the, the, the practitioners today uh, in martial arts, we, we all try to, especially those of you that teach or teach in the martial arts, we're always trying to find better ways to teach you the student. However, when it comes to motion and movement, part of the biggest problem is that what we'll have a tendency to do is because it is such a, a fine distinction between upper and lower base, especially when it comes to motion, it's very hard to explain this to a student or in a class. I'm going to attempt to do this. Um, a lot of the hand combinations, the hand movements I make are mainly made from the lower base. In other words, lower base is moving. Concept. You take most karate systems, most styles of the martial arts, they always talk in terms of always hitting or striking or even throwing. And all of that stuff is all generated from the hara or tantien, or center, as we may say. Uh, this is true. However, because of our attempts sometimes to create techniques, what we'll have a tendency to do is we move away from being able to throw those strikes from center because we have a disconnection between lower and upper base. So the center is kind of floating there while everything else is taking off. A um, couple of examples of this. <laughs> if someone is to, for instance, if you were to do a hand movement or a hand motion, and, and I'm going to do just a couple of things, and we'll do this slow. If someone, say, is throwing a strike, and I were to block one, and I were to hit my opponent thusly, what you'll see a lot of times happening is you'll see this chamber movement and this hand coming in and a striking and then hitting. Lower and upper base in that, uh, pertaining to that, is kind of moving together, but it really shouldn't. Lower base should stay slightly ahead of upper base. So therefore, the cocking movement of the hand is not really necessary. And I'm going to explain this. If I were to block here and counter block here and strike, and then say I want to strike to the left side of his head, because I'm trying to teach this in this kind of a mode, one, two, three, I'm going to have to cock back in order to fit my hand and strike there. However, if I use my lower base and it stays slightly ahead of the upper, what's happening is the block is taking place, lower base has already shifted slightly. So I've taken my, as I make contact with the right, my right hip has gone over to this side. Therefore, when the strike comes in, for me to move around to this side, the hand does not have to move that much. Now, what eliminates me from having a cock the hand is I take my left knee, and I'm going to take my left knee and I just bring it out slightly. So I'm in this position, left knee comes here. There's a bridge that takes place. There's a connection between the hand and the leg. And what's happening is, if you notice, his head is coming along with my hand. So my strike, instead of me cocking the right hand, is here. The strike comes right there. So I don't really have to cock that hand. But if I didn't do that with a knee, what I have to do now is here I become disjointed. So I have to cock my hand back in order to throw the strike. In doing so, I'm leaving an opening, a void, which could be filled. But if I allow my base, my lower base, to move here and here, slightly ahead, my hand ends up being in that posture. And if I have any contact with my opponent, what happens, his head responds the way I want it to. There's a concept I used to use called capturing the king, or taking care of basically a manipulator motion, which is a head. So my opponent strikes, what I'm doing instead of this, here, I'm doing this. He strikes, so that strike is here. Each time the lower base is moving slightly ahead. I'll watch again, I'll do this slow. Man moves, the block is here, the hip is already moved, so the hand is here. The left knee rotates outward. On contact here, that brings the guy's head right into place. So I don't really have to cock that hand. My opponent in this point in time is trying to strike again. I'm doing this again. The hip is constantly moving, which is always throwing my opponent's movement off. I move slightly again. I can change my targeting without barely even moving my hands. For you to understand this, one thing that you should do is you should try to practice basics 
of walking, posturing and positioning. Understand how your anatomy works. Understand also that you should not really be able to uh, um, change how you look at that. In other words, you don't say the leg is moving here and now the head moves. They move almost simultaneously. Okay? Again, now watch. The strike is coming in. Instead of one, two, three, four, five. Now I can appear to do that quick, but the problem is this creates a gap. Or I can do this. Man moves, strike is here. That strike is coming in right away. Where the man is right now, he goes to hit. I just shift the hip, and what's happening to his anatomy is this. I rotate center slightly, this guy's going to go down. What's doing it? My lower base. What am I hitting with? The hara. Now watch. Okay, we're going to look at this again, but we're going to look at it slower just so that you can see the footwork.